let's check out this video from Eamon Hillman, who claims to be a Greek Bible expert. Who was Jesus and why and what is so good? What is so great about him? Yeah, Jesus is a guy who walked around with 12 children and um, <laughs> no, but 12 children. No, he did not walk around with 12 children. That's nonsense. He rolled his disciples were probably late teens, early 20s. Yeah. Typically, a rabbi would start, you know, discipling people in that day and age when someone hit 20. So they would, a rabbi would be around 30, I guess you could say, or older. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, disciples were typically younger, but not children. That's that's, yeah. a, that's nonsense. Um, All the time. And, and a group of prostitutes. No, I'm just telling you. What Is he saying prostitutes? I think he's saying prostitutes. I think he's saying prostitutes. Text yeah. He was just a guy who walked around with prostitutes. Prostitutes and children. So they, what was so great about him? He called his disciples and he calls them his children constantly. <laughs> Right. Remember, no, he remember God. So he's a pimp. God blesses those who take care of the children. Right. Okay. Yeah. He takes care of these children. He takes care of these children. Okay. There is a female underage called the Paidiska. She, when Jesus Christ is in his trial, his followers won't admit there is followers. Right. It's the whole, you're going to deny me. Right, Jesus is all like, I'm gonna get friggin' scandalized. Okay. Pause it really fast. They're they're not at his trial. Like they're, they like I think maybe only John is there, mm -hmm. so he's already getting the context wrong. Uh, and it doesn't say they were prostitutes. It says that you know Jesus uh, would you know call prostitutes to repent. He wouldn't reject them outright, mm -hmm. but it's not like he had close prostitute followers. Let alone that he would be encouraging that behavior. Mm -hmm. So he could have repentant prostitutes, mm -hmm. but. And the disciples were not children. That's just nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. His entire temperament is bizarre to me. Like he seems like he's a uh, high <laughs> or something. Like something's off. Yeah. It does seem like he's doing puffing the magic dragon a little bit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's... Right. And you're going to deny me when he's in the garden and he gets caught. Mm -hmm. And those three, Peter, James, and John, they're keeping watch, the text says. They're guarding at a distance. While Jesus takes the wicked boy that's been assigned to him, that's what the text says, like a slave. So, is it, does it say it? No. a naked boy was assigned to him? No, it doesn't. I'm like, where is that? Here, he'll, he'll put up something on the screen we can respond to. It's okay. nonsense. This, the depiction of this event is only in one version of the Bible. Is that right? Is it uh, Matthew? No, it's in multiple, but the kid is only in Mark. Only in Mark. Yeah. Okay. And it's only like yeah. two sentences, and, right? Stephen, can you pull up? Can you pull up the passage? It's, I've uh, got it here. Oh, you've got it there. Okay. Yeah. 1451. Is that first line? I can pull up the passages and show different, the, the different versions yeah, and let's how do it that. translates as well. Uh, what passage is it? Mark 1451. 1451. 51. Here we go. This All is right, cool. crazy. Okay. A young man. Uh, what is it? Can you blow it up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus when they seized him. That's all it says. Yeah. Now look at the Greek. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. yeah the, and it says, go. a young boy was assigned to him, having wrapped his penis with a medicated oh, bandage. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. So, so it doesn't say that. That's utter nonsense. Uh, let's start with the first one. It doesn't say young boy. Uh, it says young man. How do we know that? Well, Matthew uses the same word that Mark uses to describe the rich young ruler that comes to Jesus and says, what must I do to enter the kingdom of God? And he says, sell everything and follow me. Mm -hmm. Do we think a young boy that was a rich young ruler came to Jesus? No, Jesus would have said, oh, you want to inherit the kingdom of God? What are you doing here? Where are your parents? Listen to them. That's how. That's what you need to be doing right now. So it says young man. If Mark wanted to say boy, there's a perfectly good work uh, word that Matthew uses in Matthew 17 to describe the, uh, the demon-possessed boy that his father brings to Jesus and heals. It's uh, pais, I believe is how it's pronounced. Mm -hmm. That's not the word in, in Mark uh, 1451. It's a young man, so someone probably in his 20s. Uh, maybe late teens, like 19 yeah. or something. But no, this is not a young boy. Uh, it doesn't say that he wrapped his... Yeah, I'm pulling up the Greek, <laughs> and this dude is just flat out lying. Like, we're looking up... <laughs> th this is Mark in the, in the Greek, and it says, and there followed him a young certain... A, and there followed him a certain young man having a linen cloth 
cast about his naked body and the young man laid hold on him. Yeah. And so when we look at that word for cloth, it has nothing to do with penis. No, and there's no innuendo in the text implying that at all. That's Yeah, it just this just means a cloth. Like this is So here here people get all crazy about this passage and they're like, "Well, why does why was he why was he naked?" Okay, well, first of all, they didn't have the the level of clothing that we have today. A lot of people just wore one garment. Mm-hmm. That was pretty common. Now, it says linen cloth, and that's a little strange because wool would have been the standard thing people would have worn. Mm-hmm. Uh, but John Bergsma has written on this. He's a scholar, uh, and he says, like, listen, okay, so linen would have been more used in Galilee. Uh, but, I mean, again, it's, it's weird that he just has a single linen cloth uh, because linen was expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, why wouldn't it be wool or why wouldn't he have extra garments? Well, the Essenes— wore one single garment. Josephus says they wore one single garment. And when we've excavated them, we found linen. Mm-hmm. They wore li- so the Essenes wore single linen garments. So we know, I'm not saying this young person was an Essene, but we know there was a cultural precedent set mm. for people to wear single uh garments just made of linen. So John Bergsma's written about this. So that's not implying anything sexual. That's just the standard clothing that someone could wear in that day, especially if you're going to be around Galilee where there was more linen in abundance and Jesus was from Galilee. So this young man could have been from Galilee. So he uh, had a linen cloth on. He ran away when the guard grabbed him. The, the linen, They grabbed the linen cloth and of course he had to run away n- naked because he didn't have anything else on. So yeah. some people think this is a subtle reference to Mark in the text. I don't think it is because the church father Papias says that Mark never met Jesus. He never heard the Lord but followed Peter. Is what he says. So I don't think this is really a reference to Mark, but uh, yeah, this is this is not a young boy running away who wrapped his male member part in linen bandages. It's talking about a linen uh, garment that he had wrapped himself in. It's <sighs> yeah. This All is right. it's, it's stretching credulity beyond belief. It's insane. Yeah, let's watch a little bit more of this. And they arrested him. A medicated bandage is what it says. Seen done. Yep, I've got the. Okay, so I'm I'm comparing the, yours to what, what this one says. So visibility. I can turn on Greek as well. Okay. I'd love to see how the uh, this online Bible <laughs> matches uh, yours. Check out the. This is okay. So right here, is that exactly what you're reading? Yeah, that's what I'm reading. Okay, which which one of those Greek words is uh. Wrapped in a medicated linen. Epi- yeah, which one? one? No, this is on the. Okay, let's just start on the first line. Maybe May we should. Should we go to his computer, Steve? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm punching that's, it. That's out. it. Okay, okay. The first. Let's go to the first one. The second word in is neoniskos, and that is what we call a diminutive. Neoniskos. So it's a little of something oh. else. And what is a no, neonius? A neonius right is a boy. It's not. Look, it's the same Greek word twice. You see young man, and you see the same Greek word under yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's because it's one word, and right. in English, it's two words, so they just point out it's the same word. Mm. So it just means young man. Mm-hmm. That's literally what it means. We don't have a, a good word in English that represents that, so we say young man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it's not... It's, it's, so I mean, so in, the, in the Greek, you're saying it reads neo, neo uskus, neo uskus? Twice? It, it doesn't say twice. Oh, it okay, just, okay, okay, we okay. have to render that when we do that, that kind of thing in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know. Okay. It's just it's once. Okay. Yeah, so this is a little boy. Okay. And nope. they called Paidiska female dudes who were underage. Okay. And when I say underage, I don't mean Did un- they define under underage down back then? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's not under 18. It's before So, okay. Right. So that was their word for, for before Age was they didn't set a year. Right. Okay. Got it. Right. The translation here says young. And was there, <laughs> was, was there uh, any sort of moral boundaries when it came to based on the pre not from what i've seen okay yeah now generally in nothing different, in different no in different civilizations you can still like in athens you can still prosecute for somebody coercing what you and i would say is underage them before pre. yeah that's still you can get in trouble for that okay but it's not like it um it's not like there's compensation involved because you know it's not like a crime like you and i consider a crime it's more like a civil crime yeah okay it's, like, like being punched right there, i want to comment on something so i mean the Athenians were all about boys. I mean, like that's just what they did. You could you could get in trouble if you got the wrong boy, but if you got like a slave boy, you could do whatever you want with him. Mm-hmm. You know who ended that was Christians. Mm-hmm. Like John Martin, John Martin's wrote a paper called "Do Not Sexually Harass Children," who noted mm-hmm. that Christians came, had to come up with new language to describe this stuff and how because it was evil and the culture didn't accept it as evil. So mm-hmm. he's trying to say that Jesus was involved in this. Pre- it's utter nonsense. Mm-hmm. The Christians were the one ending this 
this man boy nonsense, this evil, horrible pedophilia mm -hmm. practices, and they're mm -hmm. getting their ideas from what Jesus taught in the New Testament. And mm -hmm. there's nothing in Mark 14 about Jesus having relations with any sort of young boy. This guy is just making things up that's not in the Greek, and he's pretending it's there to fit the conclusion he, he wants. He is not being honest. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to look at from this clip, or should we move on? No, it, it's just, it's. It's from crazy town. It's utter nonsense. I, I, There's nothing nice I can say about what he's saying. And he has the audacity later in this interview to say that translators are idiots. They're not translating the text properly. Yeah. This guy— Well, again, it, all knowledge relies with him. He has the authority. All the other guys got it wrong, right? This is a pattern here. This yeah. is a very, like, cult-like approach to anything— I got this. I am the source. I got the right information. They got it wrong. They've lied to you. The institutions are bad. The experts are bad. The scholars are bad. I have all the authority. Exactly. And yeah. it's just nonsense. The passage is probably translated as best as it could be. A young man wearing nothing but a linen cloth ran away naked. Because again, in that culture, we see with the Essenes, it was common for people to wear one single garment of linen. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying this young man was an Essene. There's not enough evidence to suggest that. But we do see there was a cultural precedent that probably could have been seen in the Galilee that that was a common way to dress. Yeah. So nothing sexual is going on here. Nothing strange is going on here. It's pretty common in the culture for that to have happened at times. Yeah. Incredible success of our Bless God prayer journal. Many of you guys began to ask for something that had a planner. And so we combined our Bless God prayer journal with a brand new leadership planner that jam packs the same things from our prayer journal with a planner, goal setting, leadership meeting, and notes. With the next pages, you can see different sections right along here of this leadership planner where you can start out with actionable goals, 12 months of calendar, our original prayer journal prompts, our leadership journal with the proven problem solution framework, and of course, just free write notes. This leadership planner is based off of Matthew 25, 14 through 30, which of course is the parable of the talents. The vision of the planner is to help you make the most of your time, talent, and treasure. Head over to blessgod.shop and get yours today. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the video. Comment down below and let me know what you think. And be sure to check out this video that YouTube is recommending just for you. Let me know if they nailed it. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.